family at this morning. God bless you, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are so excited to be here. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's stand for a moment before we thank you for these very kind words. We thank you, Jesus. Would you just lift up your voice and thank him one more time? Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise our father we trust in you we yield these moments to you anoint us to teach truth in simple and clear language that everyone can understand anoint our listeners to understand better than we teach and to appreciate deeper than the revelations we bring at the end of the day our lives will bring forth fruit to the praise of your glory in jesus name amen, amen. amen. hallelujah so can you just turn to somebody and welcome them especially this afternoon Spe special welcome Spe special welcome praise god hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. then majestically take your seat hey praise god hallelujah hey so um a great time here thank you very much to um pastor and pastor missus dear me um you know what is interesting is um last year like pastor wally said um we met it, it was just amazing how um long a distance they had to cover to join us in that meeting traffic happened many things happened and um, they came true and it was just so good to see them um, they came through supporting in person supporting with cash it was just so, so encouraging so when we started the conversation about coming here you know uh, when you meet kingdom hearts you you find it easy to do kingdom and here we are so we're, we're grateful uh, to you and to the church that you pastor for making sure that this is a possibility. We would not be here if you didn't do what you did, simple and short. <laughs> Praise God. We're quite aware of our calling as parachurch church ministers. Um, we, we, we need a, not, a lot of enabling to be the nomadic ministers that we are. We say we are nomadic for Jesus. We just travel and travel and travel and travel. But God, God does that by raising people. Uh, we have plenty of our friends in the house, our R&M people, and um, <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. praise God, uh, from Central London, Wolverhampton, uh, I see my dear sister, Pastor Haruna, Mrs. Haruna, praise God, uh, Chidima is the one that started the shout, <laughs> Mufon came from Wolverhampton, uh, and to me that is a... My sister to me that my brother is making look more beautiful. She's doing face. Praise God. I'm not being partial. I'm just. <laughs> and he told me, all is well. The Lord is good. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If I didn't call your name, it's not partiality. You know, the good thing is that it is easy. It is better to sin in the presence of God. You can be forgiven. So if I, and I see you. <laughs> so. <laughs> If you commit sin, the friends of God, if you are offended, I mean, I'll bet the best place to be offended. Just forgive me, I'll be flowing. Praise God. Hallelujah. Chidima, doctor. Praise God, Dr. Chidima. All right, so when I was coming and I spoke about the other Chidima, I said, not your own, the other Chidima. Praise God. Praise God, yeah? Okay, now. Come, in Jesus' name. Amen. Clap for Chidima. Dr. Chidima. Yes. Okay. Praise God. Okay. Chidima is supposed to give me an assistance here, and uh, the assistance has become assistable. <laughs> so, praise God. Um, no, I'm being cross post. So, I knew you were going to need this. Praise God. So, um, we will teach in a moment, briefly. I'll be teaching, Julia will be assisting me in this teaching. 
Um, then we'll come back, like Pastor said, to answer questions after the break. Uh, yeah, just click live. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we're sharing on something very simple. Um, we try to keep it simple. We try to keep it um, easy. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you. Did I speak about my wife? You know this is a my dad. So I met her 20 years ago. Um, first, first day in the university, asked out uh, almost two years later. Um, so we started dating like 17 years ago. Or so yes, courtship actually. Uh, in December, it will be 13 years in marriage. We have three lovely children. We don't want more. May God pass the remaining children. He wants to send on it to other people in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, David is 12 uh, on 24th. Ariela is 10. Hamina is 8. She'll be 9 in February. I can't wait for them to get out of my house and so I can focus wholly on their mother because they were not there when I met her. So uh, the distraction is too much. They need to go. And um, that's a message to somebody. Don't invest yourself in your children. They'll fall in love and abandon you. That's where we have a lot of people who do not know how to maximize their old age because the children that dominated them fell in love and left them. So they look at each other and they're wondering, what are you doing here? What are we still doing together? And that's why some of your mothers couldn't wait for you to give birth because they are so tied to you. They are no longer tied to your parents, your, your father. Uh, and they, they need omugo, things like omugo. Give birth. Let me come so that, you know. It's an addiction. So I'm not addicted to our children. I can't wait for them to go, actually, because this is my life. And I'm not just saying it because I'm holding the mic. Um, part of what I'm sharing this afternoon will throw some light on that. Uh, because we live in a generation where there's much information but little revelation. So much information. Everywhere you turn. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody is a thought leader. The world is confused because there's too much thought around. That's why the world is confused. The world is confused because everything you want to do, there's a thousand ways to do it. And how many of you know that if you want to get to Buckingham Palace right now and you get 1,000 directions, 900 and something of them may be wrong? Absolutely. Have you seen people pin the wrong direction on a map before? And the map takes you somewhere totally different. The address is right or the address exists. But the map took you somewhere else. Because somebody stayed in Essex and pinned Buckingham Palace. He could contribute it. And it would not be taken down until there's a lot of reporting of that contribution. But we live in a world where the world is not reporting evil. The world celebrates evil. So nobody is taking down what is wrong. And that's why sometimes when God begins to raise voices like ours, I 100% believe this. I'm not trying to be proud. I'm just telling you I know what I'm called to do. It's to teach truth so repeatedly that it may not be popular, but it becomes a point of deliverance. Because the last time truth walked on earth, earth killed him. Because sometimes we are too after this acceptance. So I'm not holding the mic to be accepted. I told people if I really want to do things on earth from a very selfish perspective, I'm a practicing lawyer. I've got a practice. I should be in an office today, not standing in Essex and teaching the word. Praise God. But necessity is laid on us to say the truth. Oh, some people have come for counseling and couldn't even take the truth. Then you wonder, who sent you to me? Praise God. And that's why I, I thank God we do this as ministry, not as profession. Because if you pay me to talk to you, then I'm going to say what you want me to say. Yeah. But when you don't pay me, you value the time I'm giving you, I can tell you the truth. So you can leave the counseling room crying, no problem. Be going with your tears. You have received the truth. Praise God. Does that sound like warning to somebody here that I'm not about to patronize you? <laughs> I'm about to tell you the truth. And you have not heard the voice of my beloved. Oh! You know, I was singing that song one day for Jesus. Then I didn't know when I now turned to Julia and I was singing. I'm like, it's not for you. My beloved is... The most beautiful 
among thousands. Oh, Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. Go ahead. Um, it's such a great uh, pleasure and honor to be in front of you God. today. <laughs> see voice, see voice, see voice, see voice, see voice, see voice. We've prayed for and celebrated this moment ahead, and it's uh, it's an awesome thing that it's come to reality. Thank you so much, Pastor Wale and Osa, uh, Pastor Wasas, for uh, making this happen. And um, like my husband was saying, like earlier, my husband. Oh my God, your husband. <laughs> talk about me. <laughs> no joke. <laughs> Uh, we have been called to this realm of relationship and marriage and it's so important to God that people get it right in this, um, in, in this uh, direction because it determines a lot about how they are able to fulfill their assignment and fulfill purpose for God. I would liken it to, you know, the way you see an airplane. Now, before an airplane takes off, it has, it has to have a base, it has to have a runway for it to be able to airlift properly. And if, imagine if that runway is being destroyed, as in it's difficult for that airplane to take off. And whenever the airplane takes off, no matter how fly, high it flies, eventually it has to return back to base for maintenance, to be refreshed, to be repaired, uh, you know, and so many other things. So it is with the family set up. God set up the family to enable you, to make sure that you are being refreshed, you are being you know, energized, you are being encouraged, you are being strengthened. So whenever the family base is destroyed, then there's a big problem. You are not enabled to fulfill purpose. So God has set up system and systems, and we're part of that system, to ensure that people get it right in this direction, that people have the needed wisdom. Because ma relationship and marriage is God's idea. It is, it's God's establishment you know, for us to excel in our purposes. So God is interested in us getting right, get, getting it right in this direction. And he has brought about the needed wisdom in the word of God. And he has sent us, you know, to ensure that people out there have the needed information, not just any other information, but the information based on God's kingdom principle to make it work. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes, praise God. All right, so yeah, clap for Julia. She joined me. Hallelujah. She joined me fully in answering questions. So Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Um, that's the NLT. Look at the New King James version. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace not of evil, all right, um, to give you a future and a hope. One more translation, New Century Version. I say this because I know what I am planning for you, says the Lord. I have good plans for you, not plans to hurt you. I will give you a hope, all right, and a good future. No, don't worry about that. Come on. All right, so here's the deal. God has a plan on every matter. The problem on earth today is that we very often do not stick to the plan. That's the problem today. The biggest problem on earth is legitimate distractions. Legitimate. Very legitimate. I mean, you could be at a game on Sunday morning. You get excited. Your team may win. Even win a trophy. That doesn't make it right. Um, I was sharing with um, our team yesterday, and I was saying to them, you know, um, to be rooted in local in their local church because we're part of church ministry, and one of the things we do is to regard the local church a lot. We are planted somewhere. I mean, there are meetings I don't accept because I want to make sure in all our travels we're able to sit and receive of the word of God. It's God's plan to be planted in the local church. 
Um, after last Sunday, I may not be in the local church where we attend for another seven weeks because of preaching engagements or eight weeks. That's two months. You know, then I strive to find that time and we attend a Sunday or two and make sure we, are, we receive I mean, vital communication with my pastor, vital communication with my father and the Lord because it's important too. Legitimate, very legitimate. You know, you can have legitimate distractions. Now, God begins everything from the place of purpose. Man is often distracted and begins almost everything from the place of action. And that's a problem. Because God acts on purpose. So he's got the purpose before the movement. And that's why when you go back to Genesis, I'm a teacher, so please come with me. We are going to run through so many scriptures that I will not bother to read. I'll just refer to them. That means you need to, you know, get back and go through certain scriptures again. That's why God began to speak a lot in Genesis before he got into creation itself. Because the first thing God needed to do is to translate a purpose he had cut on his inside to man who is external to him or to creation because Moses was going to record the things God had intended. All right? So it begins with that intention. All right? So when you, you, you see songs like, all things are working for my good, it's intentional. Unfortunately, a lot of times we sing that song not from his intention, but from our selfishness. Because at that time, our focus is on something we want without regard for what he may want. So when he says, all things are working together for my good, my third is my good. When a lot of times we don't even know the definition of good. Because a child may think that a bowl of ice cream is good, but that's sugar. Hello. Somebody came visiting my office and I presented to him two options of tea or um, hot beverage, as they were. One was um, green tea and the other was the regular one where in Nigeria you use your Milo and your milk. He wasn't even a Christian. He came to do a forex transaction with me. Then he looked at me and said, Barista, that one good for my body, but this one good for my mouth. All right, so he said he knows he needed the green tea, good for the body, but right now he wanted to feel the taste of sugar. So he went for the sh give me something sweet, don't give me decay. Do you care what I mean? So a lot of times we don't even know what's good for us. So we are distracted by, oh, there's even a movie on it, The Pursuit of Happiness. So everybody's trying to grab something that makes them feel good and feel happy. And you know, oh, and that's what gets us into what the Bible says we are fools when we do. So they have become fools comparing themselves one to another. Because at that point, all of these things appear legitimate, but it's a distraction from finding out what's the purpose. So he said, I know the plans I have towards you. The question I have all the time for every child of God is my pursuit in the direction of his plan. That's a big question. Is what I'm pursuing in the direction of his plan. I know. He said he knows. Doesn't mean we know. The plans that I have for you. He said plans of good. And guess what? Sometimes what we call good is bad to God because what God calls good is opposite what we call good. That's why Joseph found Mary with baby. How are you pregnant when I've not touched you? I know you're a virtuous girl, but somehow you're pregnant. So because he was a good guy, he wanted to put her away quietly. Let me show you something that was good but hard. Very good but hard. The first of all, God said, you don't break up with her. Excuse me, sir. I don't break up with her. I should take responsibility for what I did not do. <laughs> you must be kidding. You must be joking. So I should, I should not break up. I wanted to do it quietly. If he got into negotiation with God, he said, eh, eh, sorry, sir. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not very mean. I was not going to break up with her publicly. I was going to do it quietly. Have you ever been in that place where you're negotiating with God? Yeah, yeah, we all in there. You just go. <laughs> we negotiate from blindness because we can't see the full picture. So we're arguing blindly. I wanted to do it quietly. I wasn't going to be mean about it. I was going to be kind about it. God says, "Shut up. That's your wife." Let me tell you how good or how mean God good God's good plan was. Have you read your Bible and realized that Joseph is the only person in recorded history who had a wedding but couldn't have a honeymoon? Because she was pregnant of God. Joseph was to marry her, not touch her. 
So this is my wife now. <laughs> I should not touch her. <laughs> God, I beg. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Look at the kind of restraint he had to put on him. If I remember my Bible correctly, he was not to touch Mary until the child was weaned. Put that around two years. Okay. For I know the thoughts I have towards you, thoughts of good, not of evil, to bring us to an expected end. Ah. The first question I ask for you today is how much of your life is driven by his captured thoughts or your ambition? How much of your life is driven by desire that you cannot defend as part of his thought? Those are the things you say and people look at you like, it's not that deep, it's that deep. Because man is not a creation of accident, it's a creation of God's purpose. There is a plan. Marriage is not just because I came of age. Marriage is not just because I desire to be married. Relationship has nothing to do with uh, what it did not begin with me. It began with a thought he held. Oh, and a lot of people get married. And they run marriage like marriage is at their mercy. At the mercy of their whims and caprices and they can do what they want. No. God has a thought on every matter. He said, for know the plans I have for you. Thoughts of good, not of evil. Thoughts. How many of us here think at all? We think. How many of us have thought about next year? You have a plan for next year? What about Christmas plans? Christmas, Christmas. It's just, it's just close by. Christmas, Christmas. Praise God. How many of us have thought about 10 years, 10 years, 10 years? We stretch the thought, 10 years, all right? God says he's got thoughts for us too. Now, let's, 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 let's take it to the realm that is not too comfortable here. How many of us are planning our lives around anxieties, worries, and concerns? When shall I marry? You're not the first person. When shall this? When shall that? When shall this? When shall that? You're not the first person. When you read in Matthew chapter 6, it says, Take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? How, we, how shall we be clothed? He said, after these things do the hidden seek. And Christians often read it and just put unbelievers. They seek on righteous things. We are righteous people. But God was saying something deeper than sin. He was saying that you can be right in me and be focused on all the wrong things. God had a husband for every single before they became single. God had wife for every single man before they became a single man. Anxiety would take us nowhere because you say, how many of you by thinking thought have been able to add one cubit? Because I can tell you the truth, if you are single here, if you could get a boyfriend or a girlfriend by thinking you have ten in one day. Hello? So at that point, it's no longer about the plan, it's about an anxiety. And Satan is the master of masking himself in things. So he brings distractions. So Peter stands in front of Jesus and says, we left everything to follow you. You want to go and die? Oh, guy, you're not dying. Jesus could not talk to Peter at that point because Satan was masking through Peter and he looked at him to the face and said, Satan, get thee behind me. So how many satanic things are we romancing rather than resisting? Because they sound good. They sound wonderful. They sound appealing. The things that, you know, make sense to us to pursue. So we are navigating through them and thinking about them and, you know, just walking through them rather than call it out for what it is. Let me be frank with you. The things I will share in the next few minutes, some of us would not necessarily get it here. But as you go back and God amplifies my voice in your head, in your heart revelation would open up to you then because his word is for instruction in righteousness correction so that we may be well equipped you will realize that you begin to take decisions that will bring adjustment to certain areas of your life you're going to drop certain fears as you're not a part of the plan because god has not given us the spirit of fear 
but of love and a sound disposing mind so that every time I lose focus on what his thought is we are just coming out of an experience that tells me what I'm saying to you so one of our team members husband is a lawyer in my office just went completely blind last Friday Within three days of the first sign, she's never been blind, never had eye issues, doesn't use glasses, no history leading to this. Within three days of the first symptom, one allergic reaction by last Wednesday, one headache by Thursday-ish, Friday, not seeing nothing. Then Satan came all out. Why? He's a master of distraction from his thoughts. Friday morning, he calls me something was wrong they have two daughters number one daughter three years plus convulsed widely friday morning that's two fridays ago now last week so julia and i got to the house Ooh. now he had miscommunicated about his wife to me those past two days he used the word one of her eyes is covered so i thought it was an external maybe something reaction or swelling Second one is getting covered. So I didn't understand. Tell me she's losing vision. So we got on Friday morning, three year plus convulsed, one year plus clinging to the mom. So we picked them out of the house. Follow us. Let's go. We got to the hospital. So they were testing the daughter for treatment and sent us for different tests and scans and blah on the wife because this is all too sudden. So we're about that. By the way, you know, you know the way God behaves. Yeah, He shows us the end from the beginning. She's moving around the house as at this morning by herself. Wow. So the manifestation is on course. Okay. So I'm coming there for a reason. So in fact, that day we had a sit out, our monthly program. So at the point we had to leave them, put somebody in charge, went home with the daughter, the elder one. Guess what? You know this devil is a very wicked devil. So we're driving to the sit out. We call it the monthly sit out. We're driving to the sit out. Number one daughter is with us. Number two daughter is clingy. Mom can't see. Dad is trying to take care of mom, but she's holding on to mom. So we're just 10 minutes from time to the sit out. And I get a call from them. They finished MRI and all manner of scan they were told to do. And we're heading back to their house when daughter number two convulsed worse than daughter number one. Real, like, <laughs> okay. So we were hit in program. I mean, we're asking questions. I was coordinating, but sending our protocol guy, call, give me reply via WhatsApp. What's happening? Where are they? I was right on stage like this. Just, okay. Okay, okay, take your feedback. We finished from that. By Sunday, they got to the house. Now, Sunday night, I prayed. I woke up at some point. I just prayed. I mean, complete loss of vision. By Monday night, I woke up in the night, and I want to pray. I couldn't pray. And the Lord took my heart back to the truth and said, okay, okay, guy, boom, 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 calm down, calm down, calm down. In the morning, sit with her over the word of God and show her again what my plan is. So I went to bed. So in the morning, I caught them. Let's look at the word of God. I have Bible study with you. We're going through all the motions medically already. That's good. But we need to look at the perfect law of liberty. Because sometimes what the devil does is to raise enough dust in your life to turn your attention to the dust rather than to the plan. So you are so focused on the dust. That's why he said to Peter, Satan has asked to save you as with. He's going to save you. But can I say something to you? I'm not focused on the saving. I have prayed for you. When you are restored, in essence, the shaking will happen. But you are going to come to restoration. You are going to deny me, guy. I can't stop it. I've tried to stop it in prayer. But your will is so strong in the wrong direction that you will actually betray me. But I'm not here to talk about betrayal. It's not in my curriculum. Because sometimes I need to go on my knees concerning my spouse and not go into a shouting match with them. Because at that moment, I figure that Satan wants a debate where intercession should be on. So you look at Peter and say, oh guy, calm down. I'm not here to address the shenanigans of your betrayal. 
See, study the life of Jesus. You will see that he learned to keep to the curriculum of his thought, not what's going on. So they caught this woman in adultery. She was right in. See, it's not, they didn't need, you know, um, it's not like I listen to secular music. I don't at all. But there's something one secular Nigerian musician said that got really popular. No evidence. You can explain tire. You know, so everybody's saying it, saying it. They brought this one with evidence. Curriculum number one, if any of you has not seen, throw the first stone. That's the first lecture of that university. Nobody could throw, they all left. Curriculum number two, go and sin no more. Excuse me, Jesus, call her now, warn her. This thing you are doing is wrong. Why are you not talking about it? It was not on the curriculum. Just go, sin no more. Not a hair. How many men? You, you won't learn. Your father talked about this thing. You don't have sense. Because some of you here in parenting, you have left God. I follow African fear. Ah, this UK before they spoil my daughter. Before, before, before anxiety. You are parenting through anxiety. So your curriculum is anxiety. Your curriculum is anxiety. Ah, this generation. Hey, oh. They say it is UK that husband's cast pass. I don't even know what I'm doing inside this UK. I don't know what I am doing inside this UK like this. Maybe I should just re relocate to Ajegule for two years when I find husband. Thank God I now have passport. We'll go back to UK together. I saw one man of God's title for his preaching in the church in Abuja this week. I love the title. He said, <laughs> he said visa or vision. Visa or vision. If you are in Nigeria, you understand better. Visa or vision. I met, I met one guy who was traveling to the U.S. a couple of years ago. And he just saw my green passport. So he came to me. Like, how are you doing, man of God? I said, fine. Oh, it's not man of God. Brother, 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 brother. How are you doing, brother? I said, fine. I said, what is he going to the U.S. for? He said, he was going for his sister's wedding. Or a cousin's wedding. So what am I going for? I said, I'm going for a course. He asked me when I come back. I said, in two weeks. I said, when I come back? Never. <laughs> Never. The guy began to lecture me. Wait till you they go back, go do. La la la. I left University of Aberdeen, Scotland, ten years ago now. Drop my pen one week later. I have no problem with you living here. If you're not here, I won't be here. I won't come and talk to benches. But the best place to be is in God's will. Not a location. God's will is a location. That's the best place to be. That's why Jesus needed to go through Samaria. His need to go through that place suspended his hunger. They came to him with the food he sent for. He said, I've eaten something better and it's a buffet. Do you get what I'm saying? So back to the story. So we sat that morning. I said, these eyes are coming back alive. I'm not saying this to take glory. I'm telling you that there is a plan. So we are going through the motions. We wake up again. I said, when we're leaving. So they're moving back to their house on Wednesday when we're leaving. And I just look at them. Yeah, they're going back to their house. I'm not God. We're not God. It's not. We weren't the one keeping them alive. Everything was stable. First daughter, second daughter, perfect, playing around like nothing happened. But these eyes are still closed. Then we share in faith again. This is the life of God in you. Those eyes are coming alive. Why? We're staying on the word of God. So every time we call, we call for manifestation. And you know, I just share with them something I heard from man of God and I've been teaching that two ways healing happened for instance in the word of god instant and gradual two ways that's why when the centurion met jesus and he spoke the word when he came back home that day he asked them what time did he begin to amend so when i called them i said how is the amending going are you amending oh yeah today i saw flash yeah today oh, i'm seeing shadows in the right eye oh it's now in the left eye then this morning she got in the bath and she was able to trace her way and see everything right now she's able to move around the house but we are not yet done we are amending so two things we said as a wednesday we say we're in restoration and it's show time because it's time to manifest the glory let me say this to you. Satan convinces you by the realities he creates around you. By the way, what we call reality is the biggest distraction to what God wants us to face. Reality, destruction. I know the thoughts I have. 
towards you. That's what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Who had seen or who had known the mind of the Lord that he should, you know, instruct him. No, we know because we have the mind of Christ. We have the mind of Christ. So the question I really have for you is, are you letting the mind of Christ come out concerning you? Or you are suppressing the mind of Christ? You are telling the mind of, just wait, wait. Please don't, don't, don't disturb my reality. I want to face my reality. You know, sometimes when you want to cry, the worst thing you'll be confronted with is somebody who can truly console you. You just want to cry. That's the first, the, the first, um, it's okay. <laughs> then the person calls again, it's okay. The more, the more they say that it's okay. <laughs> and somebody wants to console you, but, oh, ah, Kule was a good gosh. Ah. At that point, <laughs> oh, there's no Kule involved in this matter. <laughs> Do you get me? For I know the thoughts I have towards you. The thoughts of good, not of evil. Have you caught those thoughts? You know, there are scriptures that we quote and leave there. And that's a problem. There are scriptures we don't just quote and sit there. We sit on it. We look at it. For instance, what did we do? We sat there and we looked at the word of God. He said, by his stripes you were healed. By his stripes you were healed. So I say, say after me, my eyes are coming alive. I see again. Because at the time, what I heard from her, I will not see my daughters again. I say, you are seeing them. Because in fact, the first time we're going to the hospital, when she started some of those lamenting, I say, shut up. Say after me, I see with my eyes. What are you talking about? Because Satan will create a distraction. And unfortunately, you see a tongue-talking believer living on the distraction curriculum of Satan. Worried on destruction. Say, I know the thoughts I have towards you. That's what the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23. It says, guard your heart with all diligence for it determines the course of your life. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. What do you guard your heart with? You guard your heart with his thoughts. You carry his thought and guard your heart. So he looked at the woman. <laughs> he said, madam, stand up. Go. Sin no more. Satan was confused. Talk about her sin. Talk about restitution. Talk about restoration. Talk about repentance. Talk about, talk about, talk about. Satan was just, he said, mm -mm. right now in the curriculum, I already a pastor who's training her somewhere, but right now, all she needs to hear is stand up, go sin no more. Those words are more powerful than your restitution gospel right now. Because the curriculum says, stand up, go sin no more. So the question I have for you, in all of the things that life throws at you, can you boldly say you are living on his captured thoughts? Can you boldly say that you perceive your spouse the way God perceives them? That's the question I brought to the married. When you look at your spouse, what do you see? You know somebody called me a few days ago. I love his honesty. Two years in marriage. I'm losing the love I have for my wife. And I'm afraid we are hitting the end of it. Like, it's just, I, 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 it's getting hopeless. So I began to listen to him. He gave me some stories. Really powerful stories. He wasn't wrong in the stories he gave. He was right. But the more he spoke, the more I smiled. Because I could see the solution right there. And I'm so glad he came with such a, uh, an open heart. His heart was so open. He, he, he really came for counsel. You know, and as he spoke, I began to see the things he needed to do. And how he needed to perceive the circumstance. So I gave him that, you know, opportunity to first of all speak out his mind. Because sometimes people need to be able to, you know, pour their heart and, uh, and just let it out. Then he did. As he did, what did he come to me for? He came to me for the counsel of the Lord. Then I said, you have every right to be angry. You have every right to be offended. 
But you know, there are certain things that when you say, people just take it that it's uh, what religious people say. And let me say this to you. A lot of times, spiritual people have been blackmailed by being called religious and they quit doing what is actually spiritual to do. So I said, what would Jesus do? You're a husband here. What are part of the things a husband ought to do in scripture? Do you know Jesus, I believe through scripture, would not have come to die if Adam played Jesus. Read scripture. Man fell when Adam ate. Because it's Adam that rebelled, the Bible said Eve was deceived. What would happen if Adam turned to Eve, refused to eat the fruit, he would have become the redeemer of Eve right do you get what i mean so while we're yet sinners christ came and died for us because the capacity to restore is in him irrespective of us and what we had done but adam looked well subject for another day because there's a point where romance stops there's what my wife cannot lead us to romance is not always soft sometimes an instruction sit down there somebody just looked at me and like in this 21st century yes all those feminist people, they are from the pit of hell. Do you understand? Yes. Me, 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 me. Mm? I'm more feminist than feminist. The people that say they are feminists in this world, I'm more feminist than them. Can I tell you I'm feminist? Please rise, my beloved. The peace I bring to this woman, some people who are teaching feminism are killing girls on the streets. The woman in my life knows that I have no bias whatsoever for the female gender. In fact, if you want, especially those people who use feminism to attack the teachings of scripture, please, before you go and focus on submission to ask questions that are not correct, go and study what it means husband love your wives. Go and study it. Me that I'm a slave here. <laughs> Me that have no, I have no opinion in this matter. I'm told what to do. How to do it and when to do it. I, see, this is the highest slavery I've experienced in my life. I can't even be angry when I should be angry. I've been in a situation where my wife offended me. You know sometimes women's apology is not straight. It is, open your mouth, say sorry. Hey, you want to make me coffee? I don't want coffee. Then she's trying to make coffee for 12 hours. You are not taking coffee. Ah, just, just, madam, open your mouth, say sorry. She's not saying sorry. Then Holy Spirit will now decide to come on your matter. Send your wife a message. Sir? Megan, say message. Hey! Then you start typing the first line. Say not that paragraph. Remove that. <laughs> remove it. Re re remove it. Then you remove it. Reconstruct it. End it with I love you. No fire. I get what I'm saying. Because that's the curriculum. That's the plan. So the word is just full of nonsense. There's no generation where nonsense sounds like sense like this one. My beloved, to my hand. <laughs> do, you, do, you, do you get what I'm saying? So you, you just hear people, you know, people just sit on TV and just be talking. You see, let me tell you, single sisters especially, let me tell you. I have watched people talk nonsense in the name of feminism, go home and submit to their own husbands. After they have wrecked other people's children, wickedness in high places, wreck people's children. No. The biggest lesson you can give a female approached by feminist thought on earth is to not make the greatest mistake girls make by themselves. Ladies choose useless men and come and be complaining about submission. Because if you teach her to choose the right man, she'll be submitting with ice cream. With joy. She'll be kneeling. My husband, direct me. Are you not happy you are here right now? Ask my wife. Everywhere I carry her to if she's not happy to be going. Submission with, with joy. 
And that is the message to husbands here. See, the Bible says we love him because he first loved us. If you are not posturing in a way that your wife responds, you have problems, sir. You don't know the curriculum. When was the last time Jesus came out? I said, I'm your Lord and your Savior. Be careful. I'm your Lord and your Savior. Be careful. Be ca <laughs> so your husband comes. I'm your husband. I say I'm your husband. Oh, God, stop shouting. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Because voices go up when wisdom is not in display. That's when voices go up. If wisdom is in display, it will just be flowing. You see this woman? Oh, have you got a TV? And you got a remote in your hand? You change the channel. So, why should you have a remote in your hand, uncle? And I say, this TV, change to CNN now. Change, change. Oh, God, change it. The TV will respond. So, the remote is in my hand. I change the channel. When I want her to dance, hmm. And I want her to smile. Mm -hmm. See, she's even blushing, even now. You can't even help yourself. <laughs> I, I get what I'm saying. So we need to go back to the curriculum and eschew the distractions. I'm going to share some. See, where did I start off this whole conversation about what I'm saying now? Is how you even perceiving your spouse? You know, some of you are quarreling with somebody you should be praying for. Oh, 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 oh. Married people, if I wrap up with the single people, can I tell you something? The Bible said that the rot of man does not work the righteousness of God. Your anger has not changed your spouse. And you are not contributing. You are actually partnering with Satan. Because Satan is pushing them in the direction that you are now topping it up. You know ice cream has toppings. Satan is the ice cream, then you are the toppings. Satan dragged them in the direction. Jesus said, Peter, Satan has had to save you. For me, I played my role. I didn't come and say, Peter, let me tell you a little about your history. You were a broke fisherman. Do you remember the night that you toiled and toiled all night? See, every time you sit your spouse down and give them the history of their life, did God send you? How you change that? I changed your life. You know where I picked you from. You are such a foolish talker. I'm sorry. Peter, I changed your life. Your mother-in-law would have been long dead. I stepped in. Do you remember when she had a fever? One dial, I checked the fever out. And I'm at this critical point of my life and destiny. I want to go and die. You that I'm looking at as the future of this ministry. You are a very foolish Peter. Satan asks to see you, Mumu, you are allowing him to. You are, Peter, you are terrible. I don't even know what to do with you. You are a very useless Peter. <laughs> That's how people give each other history. History, history. Do you realize every time Satan pucks you, you just drop righteousness. You just pack all record. That's why the Bible, when the Bible says love does not keep record, that's what he's talking about. You just sit down. You just be giving your wife and your husband the entire history. He looked at him and said, Peter, the most important thing to do in your situation is to have prayed for you. I didn't just pray. I prayed with faith. How do I know Jesus prayed with faith? He knew the outcome of his prayer. Not you are in a meeting like this. They say pray for your spouses. No faith. Oh. You just do it because we are praying. Shaba, 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 shaba. The moment in the car park, I know my husband. I, I, my own husband. I know my husband. I know my husband. I, my own. Ah. Mm -hmm. That guy just came from Nigeria. Just boboing us, making people excited. They, they believe which prayer. My husband cannot change. <laughs> and you know what the devil does? Let me go back to the story of the loss of vision. He intensifies the reality so that you can leave the thought. So it looks like the very day I chose to pray for my wife is the day she came with the highest offense. Why? Believers want to treat prayer like a magic wand. Even God is impressed when your prayers are tested. So Jesus came out of a 40 days fast. He did not see manifestation of the spirit. Because you know when we're growing up, I'm still growing though. From secondary school, we felt there's this fasting when you enter. As you just come out on the street, everybody will be slain under the anointing. It's a lie. It's girl you will see. Your emotion will say she's fine. 
She's sweet looking. Oh boy, arrange that one. Jesus came and saw Satan. Satan began to show him things. Why? If you think you have crossed a level in God, can we check where you truly stand? So, don't lose focus. What's the plan? Well, I know the thoughts I have towards you. Thoughts of good. You know, that's where I come to, and I speak to single people also. There is nowhere you are that God doesn't have a plan. If Google Map can reroute, I don't know how you came to be where you are. Whether married, single, divorced, widow, I don't know how you find, found yourself at that location. God is never stranded for an option. For I know the thoughts I have towards you. Thoughts of good, not of evil. That's why, see, please, just this word I'm sharing today is just so simple. You know, I talked about curriculum. What's on the curriculum of his thought? That's why the prodigal son did all he did when he was coming right at a car park, just like what I'm seeing over there. The dad saw him, and what he did was to go for him because on the curriculum, it was restoration time, not lecture time. So what did you actually do with the money? You know, I warned you. You won't listen. That's what your African father would do. I, 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 see, I'm not saying you should not have come back home, but now that you're back, can we say the truth? Well, I don't even, you know, this is your generation. That's why some of your repentance as a child, you could not complete your repentance because it was met with condemnation. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a word to some spouses here. Because when your partner is kicking into restoration, what you should do is to receive them. You know what people do? This person is making an effort, but too much judgment in you won't even receive them. How can, how can I trust this apology? Oh, many couples come to me like that, and I'm like, wow. If you know the bad things I hear, if your spouse can say sorry, whether he means it, she means it, or she doesn't mean it, you need to first of all receive it the way it is brought. And don't overjudge how it is brought. Because if you start overjudging the how, you have missed the point. So he went after him. Oh, my son can come back. <laughs> it's time to solidify the restoration. Because if he could leave the first time, he can leave the second time. So the curriculum was received. Then his brother was foolish. <laughs> I've been here. You did not throw a party. Oh boy, you are here. Everything is already yours. All things are yours. But if one is coming back, I need to throw a party. But that curriculum didn't make sense to the brother. It didn't make sense at all. So here's a question I have for you. Are you living your life to his curriculum? What exactly is the basis of where you are right now? What's dominating you? All the fears you are dealing with, why? Just why? That's the question I brought. It's a simple question. Why? Why are you afraid? Why are you overthinking? Why are you staying up at night? I can give you some of the answers. You have a history that you should not have. I'll give you an example. I am 32, 32, 32. I became of age for marriage since I was 18. Because my own mother married at 17 and a half. So let's assume that I should not have been bothered about man. Between 1 and 17. Let's begin to count. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, that's 5. 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. That means my time has gone by 15 years. Calculator. Well done. That's curriculum one that God did not give. Curriculum two. Now look at Julia. How old is Julia? Her first child is 13. When will I start? As I, somebody told me, a husband is not coming. She wants to go and is it, carry her egg and do something because she has a lot of love to give a child. So if marriage will not happen, let her kukuma have the child. I say wickedness just happened. Because God did not ordain any child to be parented by a single person. 
if it happens by death or circumstance of life, let's call it what it is. It happened, but that's not the original plan. Because Jesus looked at them and said, in the beginning, it was not so. And may I tell every believer this, irrespective of what the devil throws as reality, the Bible says the just shall live by faith. And once a believer gets out of the faith lane, he has missed God. Faith! So I hear a man of story. Let me tell you. I hear stories. I tell people, if you sit in my position, you either run mad or run to God. Me, I run to God. Because you will hear things. But whatever the story is, can we go back to the place of what is his thought on this matter? What's his view on this matter? What do we do from this point on? If believers learn to do that, we begin to live our best life. What's God's thought on this matter? What's this girl doing in my life? How should I handle this girl? When she turns to me, her thought is, what am I doing here? What's his thought on this matter? Oh, I am single. Nobody has even greeted me and we're in September. This is the year that at the beginning of the year we began to shout. This is my year. It's looking like it's not my year. I go back to him. Hold on, sir. We shouted during crossover. That is my year. Because you say, come, let's reason together. I'm not trying to be rude. And I'm not trying to disturb your sister. Oh, I remember. You never sleep, no slumber, so you're awake. So can we talk, sir? What are your thoughts? Why? Let me tell you one of the worst things that can happen today in Essex. Number one, I drive on the left, you guys drive on the right. You give me a car key. No internet. Then you ask me to go to Buckingham Palace. I will enter every road I see. And the chances are that in the next 12 hours, I will not be anywhere near Buck before the ham. Or in ham. Do hmm? you get let me give you the painful story of 2022. Children Ma refused to come and pick me from Heathrow. It's a joke. She just looked at me like, what? <laughs> Children Ma was not even built to see me until later. Well, here's the deal. I landed in Heathrow. I used to travel to the UK a lot with pride and arrogance. Then number one, I realized that I was even telling my wife that she should be ready to be disappointed, but it's like they're back. It's like COVID year, they're still recovering. Internet was downgraded, only WhatsApp. I was with two big bags and my hand luggage, three. I arrived in the night. Have you ever searched for Wi Fi like this? Give me Wi Fi that can call both. Oh, Uber. Okay, I will pay. Don't worry. I'd, I will take the expensive option. I couldn't find. I exited at the wrong place. I studied. All the bus maps, I couldn't understand Jack. Which one we go? It was it uh, West London? I was going to stay where we did the program. I couldn't understand. Then I went to the buses. Wicked people. Which one is going to? Is it King something something? They don't know. The one that was kind to me for that confused me. Take bus X. Then when you get to so and so place, you are allowed to take so and so train. Then when you come down, you now take this bus. Then when you come down, you now take this keke. You now come down, you now take this wheelbarrow. I mean, the guy just really talking. I'm like, you are wicked, my brother. <laughs> I tried to go to the Uber app. No internet. What arrogance brought me here? In the past, once I drop, shops are open. The bar. Lebara, beloved Lebara, and I get both data and quarter, everything just flows. So I was stranded. You know what happened? Finally, finally. Oh, I didn't tell you what led me to this. Oh, I actually got in Hitro Express, 25 pounds. I only got that money back two weeks later. Then they said there was fire in the tunnel. Not in the tunnel, but they told all of them to stop. That was where the journey began. So that was my easy way out. It was supposed to get me to a particular street where I would be glad to take a, 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 an Uber. So this knocked me back to nothing. So that's how we came out of. Because Heathrow Express had Wi-Fi that was working. So I was proud. I was telling them, I've arrived. I'm around. But my two hours pain began at that moment. Finally, they convinced me on the ground, which I didn't want. I dragged myself. Got in the other ground, sat down. Jesus Christ. One hour something was supposed to go painfully. I'm wrapping up now. Then I now missed the place I should come down. 
and connect to the other one. So I came down. Hmm. Man of God, full of the Holy Ghost. I came down. The way I saw the name of the place, I said, bad as it be, once I come out on the street, I'll take an Uber from here. Then I came out, it was a garden that had shut down for the night. Everything was dark. I said, wee, 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 wee. with my two bags, I began to run. <laughs> See, Roy, I began to, I'm not kidding. This fear, just like, you know that garden, wee, 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 wee. I said, this place used to come alive in the daytime. Everything is black. Dark. Why did they allow me to cross that door and climb up? It's even climbing. So imagine two luggage bags, hand luggage, knapsack bag, running down staircase back. <laughs> so I went down and I saw this man who was stranded. He didn't have two quid to buy. Is it two or three quid to buy a ticket? I paid for him so that I can get it. <laughs> See, oh boy. So he told me we needed to go one way back before I come out, the other one then take a train somewhere then. Train. We went one way back. I came out. I saw human beings, not darkness, human beings, human beings. <laughs> At that point, I still don't have internet. This was almost midnight. I just saw the normal taxi. Say you have meter. I say, yes, meter. <laughs> See where I'm going to. Anything the meter reads today will pay. <laughs> As bad as this story is, that's where a lot of Christians are. No specific instruction on which they are living. If Jesus did not live on instruction, he would have not died. Nobody wants to die. But he came to the point where he began to tell them, I didn't come to live, I came to die. It's after I die that I will live. What's the purpose of your being single right now? Have you asked God, why are you where you are? Because sometimes, even us in church, we have created you a problem you should not have. Because some people are supposed to quite be as broke as they currently are because God is taking them somewhere. We want them to have one million pounds this year. Even God is not releasing that one million. <laughs> because in this curriculum, 20 pounds is the answer right now. Hey, somebody just looked at me. I like other preachers. They are very kind. This one is wicked. Don't run away. We are coming back to answer question. Don't run away. They are still assigned the word of God. But ask yourself right now, what's the plan? Because every time we get anxious, we become confused. Because everything begins to look like an option. Everything. So the question I came to ask you today is, what's the purpose of where you are? right now, wherever it is. Don't try to navigate out of it without going back to the one whose thoughts for you are thoughts of good, not of evil, to bring you to an expected end. Let's just bow our heads as we pray over this first session. Can you just pray a simple prayer? Help my heart to lay hold of your thoughts concerning me for this minute. It's when I do that that he can tell me, oh, this place is a mistake. Or this place, is, this is why you're here. It never brings confusion. He's not the author of it. What he does is to begin to give specific direct. As I speak, some of us are going to go back to the place where we take extended time to pray. To understand his curriculum for us. So marriages here need to go back to God. We have just been doing it. Why are we here? Why did you bring us together at this time? Why did you give us the children you gave us? What exactly, where am I on the map of your plan? Where am I on the map of your plan? Am I just loosely anxious? Or am I capturing your plan for me? Just like that night that I was hovering around and trying to find my way. Not because there was no way. I didn't find a way. If I simply had Google map. Or I was connected to the internet. I was able to see how far have I come. Then I would know where I'm going to. And that's why we see milestones on the road. To know how far we have come and how far more we have. Because at that point there's certainty that this is where I'm going to. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? And how you need to pray to the Lord. Go back in your mind and think about being off the internet in the things you do in an internet age where you are dependent on direction. And you see how stranded you'll be. That's why there's a lot of sense of frustration even among believers. Because we're groping in the dark, looking for what we don't know. When we can go back and say, Dear Father, this marriage is leaving me in a lot of bitterness. This being single, this being in this situation is leaving me in a lot of confusion, anxiety, fear. I want to capture your thoughts because your thoughts for me are thoughts of good, not of evil. It will bring me to an expected end. I open my heart to receive those thoughts. I open my heart to embrace those thoughts. I open my heart to begin to walk in line with those thoughts. To begin to regard your direction on every matter. And I would even see the things I crave, the things I desire, the things I pursue, whether they make the cut of the things I should even think about. Then I'll come to the point where I ask for the ones you want me to do. How do I do them? When do I do them? Thank you, our Father. I ask my Father, call our hearts back to the matters that matter. Give us specific directions. The word says in James 1 5 that we should ask for wisdom if we need it. Lord, we ask for wisdom. We are at different points in our lives where we need to take different instructions and focus on the curriculums you have for us. Thoughts of good, not of evil. To bring us to an expected end where we'll be able to walk in your purpose for marriage, for our relationships, and for our lives. We give you praise because we know that you burst wisdom in our hearts as we yield to your spirit and receive your guidance in the name of Jesus. We give you praise. We give you glory. Hallelujah. Praise God.